If you fall, stay down. Everybody saw it. For some reason, we all were like, oh, we got to jump up and get back to our feet. Maybe nobody saw it. Everyone saw it. Everyone saw it. You just ate shit in front of us. We all saw it. Don't be embarrassed anymore. Lay there and let people be concerned for you. Because here's what happens. You hurry to get back up to your feet and you're hurt, dude. You just broke your hip. You just broke your leg. You just broke your shoulder. You just cracked ribs. You just banged your head on the ground. What's going to happen when you try to hurry to get to your feet? You're probably going to fall again. Okay? So if you fall, just know we all saw it. And everybody just went, oh shit, did you see that lady just fall? Yeah, we all just saw it. So just stay down. Okay? I fell. I fucking, I fell. <laughs> I need help. I just got hurt. I fell. Just lay there. Hey community, welcome back. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, everybody. Welcome to the channel. I'm Robert Linkle with TrainingTheOlderAdult.com. I want to talk to you today about a very personal issue uh, that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, had another one of my clients fall on ice and break her arm. Uh, if you are a follower of us at all, you know that last season we had three clients fall. Um, two broke bones in their arms. One had a massive major concussion uh, and some other damage done uh, that you know was a life concerning situation. And so between those three last year, this one that just happened, it's got me a little hypersensitive, hyper aware. And so here comes the deep dive of why we need to be so careful about ice and falling and why this is a big issue. So uh, if you have somebody in your life that you are concerned, uh, older individual maybe, or females, as they are three more times likely to have osteopenia, osteoporosis than men. Uh, if you have someone in your family or your life that you are worried about uh, and concerns of falling and breaking and doing damage, please send them this, let them uh, learn from it a little bit. And uh, also, um, if you can help us subscribe uh, to the channel, help us grow things here. I work very hard on these videos. I put in a lot of research, a lot of time to make these. In exchange, I just ask for that subscription and it helps us grow and helps us get more eyes on this. Uh, everything gets kind of pushed up the algorithm the more subscribers we have. So I uh, ask you to do that again. Don't charge. We don't do uh, any subscriptions and you know ones where you have to pay for them and that kind of thing. Uh, so anyhow, uh, if you could help us out, that would be great. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at this. This is direct from the CDC. Okay, now this is just in in concern of falls, period. Okay, this is not ice falls. This is just, fall. well, it is ice falls, but not just ice falls. This is falls across the board, okay? Each year, millions of people, 65 and older, fall. In fact, more than one out of every four older adults falls each year, but less than half tell their doctor, okay? Which means lots of people are falling, getting injured, and uh, some of them are just dealing with it, others, are going to their doctors and telling them. So the, the point being is this could be higher than we're actually seeing. Um, one out of five falls causes serious injuries such as broken bones or head injuries. Each year, 30 million people are treated uh, for falls. 800,000 um, participants each year are hospitalized because of their falls. Each year, 300,000 people are hospitalized due to hip fractures. More than 95% of hip fractures are caused by falling, et cetera, et cetera. $50 billion in Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, you can see our cost on this. So point being is falling is bad, okay? Falling causes damage. Let me give you some advice about falls, right? Number one, if you fall, stay down. Everybody saw it. For some reason, we all were like, oh, we got to jump up and get back to our feet. Maybe nobody saw it. Everyone saw it. Everyone saw it. You just ate shit in front of us. We all saw it. Don't be embarrassed anymore. Lay there and let people be concerned for you because here's what happens. You hurry to get back up to your feet and you're hurt, dude. You just broke your hip. You just broke your leg. You just broke your shoulder. You just cracked ribs. You just banged your head on the ground. What's going to happen when you try to hurry to get to your feet? You're probably going to fall again. Okay. So if you fall, just know we all saw it and everybody just went, oh shit, did you see that lady just fall? Yeah, we all just saw it. So just stay down. Okay. I fell. I fucking, I fell. <laughs> I need help. I just got hurt. I fell. Just lay there. Okay. Let people come and help you because look at the statistics. Damage is done. When you try to hurry back to your feet, it does no good for you, okay? So just lay there. Take in a full account of your body. What is hurt? What is done? Because you're embarrassed, okay? Your adrenaline is pumping. You're not gonna feel a lot of pain right then, 
all you're going to feel is I'm embarrassed because I just fell down, especially if it's in front of a lot of people. Like if you're walking through the city and you trip on a curb or you slip on ice, okay? There are people everywhere. You're su you're mortifiedly embarrassed and you're like, I just want to stand up. Okay. So no, heart's pumping, all this is going on. And then later on, all that starts to wear off and you realize, Hey, I just hit both of my wrists. I think I hit the back of my head. I think my shoulder is sore. I think my, all of this is going to start to hurt. So when you, you know, you crash on the ground, just take a second, take account, let somebody kind of help you to your feet, get you to a seated position and go through a head to toe checkout and make sure where the damage is done. And if there is no damage, then you're okay. You can continue on. Okay. The only time you need to get up quickly is if you are in danger, like you just fell into the street, of course, get up. Okay. All right. So there's our advice. If you fall, stay down. Don't worry about being embarrassed. We all saw it. We agree. Okay. All right. Other common look. So I, I, again, I like to cite where we find all this information from. So this one here is three common injuries that come with our falls. You're going to see broken wrists and fractures. Why? Because as we start to fall, everybody wants to brace for their fall. So they put their hands out. They put their hands out in front of them. More than likely, you're going to impact your hands and or your wrists. Okay. They are going to take the brunt of the damage when you do that. If you are falling backwards or to the side, you're going to put your hand down, which means the wrist will take impact. But the counter of that weight is going to go up and through your shoulder. Usually the shoulder or the arm is going to take damage. I'm going to show you some x-rays and some images here of these falls here in just a moment. Rotator cuff injuries and or shoulder separations are very common. If you fall direct on your shoulder, if you fall in any kind of odd angle with your arms, etc. Okay, if you're landing on other implements like a curb or a counter or a bench or something like that. And then herniated discs or spinal issues. Uh, this one I've had personal experience with when I was like, I don't know, 20, 25, 26, Keegan and I just met. We went on a romantic date to go ice skating together. And all I remember is Keegan ice skating like a professional. It's like Nancy Kerrigan skating around and then I'm dumbass, you know, Tanya Harding, like trying to figure my shit out. And I'm like, I just can't do this. I can't do it. She comes skating by and she goes, hey, can you skate backwards? And she like flips around and, and I'm like, of course I can. I'm a division one athlete, baby. So I spin around the next thing I know, both feet straight up in the air, straight onto the back of my head, the back of my shoulders and my back. And I made the sickest thudding grump noise you will ever hear. Just this, uh, this, this guttural, <laughs> everything that was in my body was thrown out of it in that moment and then slowly came back to life uh, only to hear everyone laughing and uh, again took the moment to realize I just fell in eight shit in front of all of these people and everybody saw it so why should I hurry back to my feet uh, I was hurt and my back was injured and I was pretty jacked up for a while I played it off well as I crawled off the ice but uh, I was damaged so that was probably one of the initial uh, cracks in the armor if you will of my lower back Okay, another one, injuries caused by slipping on the ice. Top five, actually, that we're going to look at. Uh, same website. All right, so muscle sprains, ligament strains, tears. We talked about that. Fractures, spinal compre compressions, uh, all kinds of just different broken bones, wrist, hands, injuries, back injuries, pain, concussion, head injuries, hitting the back of your head. So there was a study done. Boy, I've been talking about this for at least 15 years. So it was at least 15 years ago. I would have to go back and find the study, but... Um, they were looking at individuals that were attempting to become professional wrestlers, not like the Olympics. I mean, like WWE, you know, can you smell what the rock is cooking? That kind of wrestling. Okay. So, um, which I'm a huge fan from back in the nineties. I'm from the attitude era, baby. Okay. Back in the day, the generation X, all of that. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. Uh, anyhow, I'm from that generation. The Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? The, the, the double pythons. That's my guy. All right. As you can see, my look, who I stole it from. All right. Anyhow, wrestlers, okay? They're finding, and there was like a TV show that did this. They're finding that um, women can't take bumps. That means get thrown on the ground and, and hurt, hurt, right? In wrestling. Can't take a bump as well as men can because they're lacking neck strength. Okay. So to prove this, they would bind their arms to their chest and just drop them backwards onto the mat. And 10 out of 10 of the men could tuck their chin and not bang their head on the back of the mat. And 10 out of 10 of the women couldn't, they all hit their heads. Okay. So by observing that and realizing why is this, 
Men spend a lot more time building muscle in their necks. We play football, we play uh, rugby, we play sports where we hit people with our faces and our heads, so our necks get a little bit more work. Women are much more dynamic and uh, fluent in, th in movement, and they're very good with flexibility because the sports typically that they participate in growing up are more based around that. So testosterone, muscle, growth, hitting people with our faces, necks get a little stronger, we've got the neck strength. This doesn't mean that women can't take bumps and that we can't have very good neck strength, male or female, if you work on it, it just means that we spend more time hitting things with our heads, very barbarian-esque if you ask me, but that's, hey, that's what we do. Um, but developing the neck strength, okay, and your sternocleidomastoid and these other muscles in here to hold your head in that tucked position when you hit the ground. That being said, if you are not resistance training, male or female, and you slip and land on your back, the majority of us are going to smack our heads on the back of the ground. That's including if you do resistance train, but you don't have the 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 cognizant moment to go, hey, I'm I'm in I'm in the air, I should probably tuck my chin. It happens that quick, right? So you're gonna have this instant to think, protect my head, tuck and pull and tuck my chin and reason. Most of us aren't training and doing things. That prepare us for that so point being is most of us are going to hit our heads and or faces on the ground when we fall you have to protect for this and understand man i could have just hurt myself let's go through this as well all right suggestions to help prevent this number one is is simply awareness it's recognizing that when you look at your watch and it goes hey it's 33 degrees outside okay my watch is guesstimating around here, it's pretty damn cold. So more than likely there is ice on the ground, I need to be careful, number one, okay? If there is snow, you're in Tahoe and it's like, oh, the, the roads are paved and everything looks great, but there's snow everywhere, it's cold enough to keep snow, there's cold enough to be ice, people. You're gonna fall down. So you gotta be aware, you gotta be aware, you gotta be aware. We don't need any more broken arms. You can see a shit ton of people are getting hurt Excuse all the language, I'm a passionate person and this is a passionate topic because most of the time when people fall down, they're not paying attention. All four falls, my clients, the first thing they all said to me was, I wasn't really paying attention and blank, right? Whatever the situation was. We're thinking about something else. We're thinking about, we're, we're hurrying to get after the dog. The mailman was coming, that this was that. These are these real things. This is what the excuses were. They were thinking about something else we weren't thinking hey, there's ice on the ground, maybe I'm gonna fall and hurt myself. So being aware, proper footwear, okay? Taking short steps, when you're on ice, when you're literally on ice, yes. Everywhere else, no, okay? Everywhere else you take larger gait steps because wider bases are more stable, but they're only stable if the surface they are on is not slick, is if they have ground reaction for it. And people go, oh, Rob, you always talk about wider bases and big gates and how older people take little tiny steps, but then when they're on ice, you tell them to take small steps, yeah, because they're on a surface that isn't stable. Right? I mean, of course, the wider you make your feet on ice, the more you're going to slip and move apart. So you gotta take the short, choppy little steps. Remember uh, John Candy, when he's teaching the guys in, uh, in Cool Running how to like chop on their toes and run in place to get the grip on the ice? Remember that, okay? John Candy's teaching us lessons about how to not fall down. Shorter little steps, only on ice, okay? Uh, slow your pace when you're walking an icy surface. Yep, and definitely slow things down. Uh, pay attention for icy patches, sprinklers, etc. Carrying a cell phone in your case when you're injured. Carrying a cell phone with you in case of okay, carry it with you. Uh, or your life alert. <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> That's a joke that never gets old. Every time my dad's phone goes off, every time it rings, I go, "Oh, there's your life alert." <laughs> anyway. I swear I do this video half for me, half for you, just to entertain myself. Um, work slowly when performing outdoors and chores and icy conditions, okay? Make sure we're paying attention to that as well. All right, uh, everything else, okay, steps after you slip, we've talked about this, you know, take take account in, of your current situation, see where you're at. I think everybody should go to the hospital after they fall. And I mean like, whack, boom, okay, that kind of fall. Not like a, uh, 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 and you slowly kind of slide down. Even then you can hurt yourself, but if you like eat shit, right? Like you fell hard, then this is you, okay? You need to go to the doctor. Even if you think you're fine, okay? Our client that fell last night, go, oh, it's just my shoulder is broken. She had a broken rib too, she didn't know that. 
Okay, it says on the x-ray, because they saw it in the x-ray when they examined her shoulder. Because remember, you got ribs right here, gang. Like your rib cage goes from your sternum at the top all the way down. Your clavicle is basically a high rib, and then there's more ribs that descend underneath that. Okay, basically. I know you anatomy people out there are going to be like, not really, Rob. It's not a part of the rib cage. I understand that. As far as its alignment with everything else, it's basically a big floating rib. Okay? All right, so things break like that and you don't even know it, again, you're embarrassed, adrenaline, et cetera, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor, okay? Go to the ER, just get checked out and make sure you're good because you could have some additional injuries that you don't know about. When you get uh, your care, you typically they're gonna do an X-ray or a CT scan, do something to check out the bones and ligaments and all that kind of stuff. If you continue to have pain, they're gonna give you pain meds. They're gonna probably put you on a little waiting list uh, to be able to go in and see your doctor. They're gonna check you out, see if you need surgery, what's really broken, is it just a heal? Do you need a splint? Do you need a brace? Whatever the case might be, something will come about, some kind of information. Oh, thank you. My coffee cake was just delivered. Do you guys wanna see it? Take a look at this. Take a look at that, baby. Look at that. This is uh, all vegan protein based. <laughs> <laughs> sugar-free coffee cake only the best for me on my vegan protein diet it's really good shit okay um, anyhow get checked out CT scans MRIs ultrasounds whatever they're gonna take splints make sure you go through the whole thing if they say surgery uh, get it okay I'm, I'm a fan of when stuff is broken don't just kind of put it to chance it'll heal on its own if listen to your experts if they know is best okay here's a story from ABC News how dangerous is winter weather? Winter weather kills more than twice as many as summer heat, okay? Now, I understand that they're talking about car accidents and other things too, but as we continue the story down, this was the line that I, all, I wanted you all to see. Uh, second paragraph at the bottom, approximately 1 million Americans are injured annually as a result of falling on ice and snow. About 17,000 of these falls are fatal, the CDC says. A lot of these deaths are avoidable. Stay aware of freezing of the freeze and the uh, thaw cycles. Don't text while you're walking. Walk on the grass when you can. Always treat slippery spots uh, as if they are icy and treat them with ice melt. And if you have a family member with a cane or a walker, make sure uh, it has rubber feet. Oh, the walker does not them. <laughs> you just said to wear good shoes, bro. I think they're all made of rubber. Anyhow, uh, so you get the point, okay? You get the point. All right, let's take a look. Here's the break. I gotta get my my uh, thing here. Hold on, I'm getting sun in my eyes. I gotta adjust the. We're doing this all live. Doing this live. Did not anticipate sunrise right now. Typically have clients right now, but uh, with the holidays we canceled, so that's why I'm recording at this time. Was not ready for the sunrise to come up right there in my face. Okay, <clears throat> this is unfortunately the break that occurred yesterday. Uh, this is a proximal humeral fracture. And that basically means just below the ball, as you can see up there, just below the ball socket that goes into the joint, that little neck broke. Proximal meaning closer, distal meaning further away, the proximal end snapped, okay? Now, from here, there's a lot of different things that can occur. Um, this next one shows that there are breaks that can occur in different places. You can get like a hairline, you can get a vertical snap, you can get it where it breaks into two, and. It, uh, the one part fracture, as you see at the top, you can have cracks in it. You can have dislocations, full fractures, tears, all kinds of different stuff. So these can be, if you just see on your report, it's like, oh, it's, it's just a break. There were five different breaks right there that you saw. Here in the x-ray, you can see the snap. That little black part, that's not supposed to be there. That's a gap. That's a space where the bone has snapped and now moved away. And then look on the left. See the ribs? One, two, three. You can see three, four, maybe faint right there, four ribs that you can see in those x-rays. So that's where you'll see, oh, hey, by the way, when you fell, you broke one of your ribs too. Uh, and in some cases, ribs can be broken so violently that shards or shearing component of the bone punctures in and can puncture your lung and or some other things. So um, I, it may be a, a, a rare situation that that occurs, but it happens often enough that we need to discuss it, okay? All right, uh, other issues with this as we start to look through, um, one part fractures that we see, they're rare, but you know, 80% are treated with a mobilization and a sling, which is nice. I'm hoping that that's what's going on with my client here is that she's just gonna be able to, you know, be in a sling and this will start to heal up on its own. Um, surgery is needed in some cases, but we'll see. They'll talk about 
uh, some of the physical therapy. I'm going to, uh, of course, encourage her to go and see Dan um, once this gets better. And then they give you a couple of these little exercises that can just kind of help you create a little bit of space in there and, uh, you know, start to be able to work your way back to it. So um, there's your severity when it comes to different falls. It comes to situations where um, we have concerns for our clientele. All of us, anybody, everybody uh, is a concern and a risk for falling. But, okay, but the older that we get, if you are not resistance training, okay, the likelihood of your bones becoming very soft are very, very high. Even if you are resistance training, you are still more susceptible simply because we're aging, okay? My bones are more dense at 25 to 30 than they are when I'm 35 to 45 for most people. And every decade that goes by, they're gonna get a little softer. Even if I'm resistance training, even if I'm pushing myself, it's just general wear and tear. We can, we'll keep it well above average, okay, by resistance training. My point is, is nobody's bulletproof, right? Like just because you're lifting doesn't mean I can fall and I'll just take my bump and get back up. You're gonna be bruised and, and banged up, but there is a pretty good chance that you can break. And a lot of times too, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, guys lifted weights his whole life, broke his leg like twisting wrong with skis on his feet and snapped his femur, okay? and like a pretty severe injury. So it can happen to anyone is my point. And we need to rehabilitate these falls back really, really well. For some reason, and this, this is gonna be another generalization, okay? But in my 22 years of being a trainer, I have had multiple clients, I'm talking at least 30, if not more, have their doctor tell them, you don't need to rehab this injury slash surgery slash replacement of a joint just start living life again. And it blows my mind when people say that. You just had a major surgery. You just had a major injury. Any surgery is major surgery. If you're being knocked out and being cut into your body, there's definitely more severe, right? But everything, you're having parts of your body messed with and put back together, it needs to be rehabbed. If it's a minimal scope of your knee, if it's a, a basic little, you know, uh, 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 ganglion cyst or a uh, carpal tunnel release, like something that can be done in an office almost, you still need to rehab that injury, okay? If you want it to work as good, if not better than before, which is the whole point of having the surgery, it's not just to end the pain, but to gain back function is really why we do this. My knee hurts, I can't use it very well. Let me get a knee replacement, now it doesn't hurt, and I can use it. Remember, that's a 50-50 ball game. You don't wanna just go, well, it doesn't hurt anymore, I'm just gonna keep doing what I used to do, which was nothing. The whole point of getting this replaced is so you can use it more, for more function. So if you want to be able to do that, you need to be able to rehabilitate it, okay? So whenever somebody tells you, yeah, you don't have to rehab that horseshit, that's not true, you need to rehabilitate, okay? You need, everyone needs to rehab no matter what the surgery is. If I'm not being clear, you need to rehab. It could be a hernia repair. It could be the mo as anything short of a cosmetic injection, that's probably the last thing you don't need to rehab, okay? Everything else, you gotta rehab, even a, at least a couple of days. Something just to get things strong again, just so it's working for you, okay? I know I'm beating the dead horse, you're getting the idea. But take that to heart, rehab better, so when you come back, you're better than you were. That is our goal, that's always our goal, is to continue to keep you capable and able and being strong for the future, whatever you wanna do, your golden years, wherever you're gonna go with this. We don't wanna become part of these statistics where God forbid you, you you die from this, okay, from this fall, but where life is seriously altered, meaning there's of these 80,000 people that are hospitalized, probably half, if not more, their quality of life is drastically changed. I'm, I'm, again, I'm guesstimating because it's upwards of like 70% of those over the age of 50, I believe, are severely uh, hampered by their falls meaning like their quality of life drastically reduces. So when you have a 75 year old grandparent or parent that falls and they rehab and they're just as good, that's that's pretty rare. It doesn't occur like that very often, okay? Usually it goes the other direction, they get worse, right? So we want to encourage that statistic. Help yourself get strong, get capable, get able again. Any comments, questions, hit me up down below, I got you covered. I love and appreciate all of you. I hope you know that. And I would in, encourage you to share this with someone, okay? And there's always somebody that like, you curse a lot.
guys, we're all adults here, okay? And I'm a passionate human being, so when I'm gonna to talk to you about something that truly matters, this is a message from me to you. I'm not doing a thesis or a dissertation for some kind of grant. Like, I'm sending you a message, so I'm just gonna talk like I normally talk, okay? If you're in here training with me, I drop F-bombs, I try to make you laugh, it's all part of the entertainment, but I'm delivering a message to you as well. So please forgive me for cursing here or there. I'm trying to get the idea across to you that this is an important thing, I'm a passionate person and it comes out. So please forgive me if you're offended. Um, I'm doing the best I can. It's a free channel. Please subscribe. <laughs> I really appreciate the support. I love and appreciate you all. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Festivus for the rest of us, whatever you're celebrating. I hope it's fantastic. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, continue to fight the good fight against sarcopenia. I love you. See you later.